Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today in this tutorial, we will be, I guess not a tutorial, it's a tutorial series. We will be building a game akin to Minecraft. It's not be completely similar, but it's be quite similar. We have lots of the same features. This will probably be spread out over like 20 tutorials or so. And in today's, we'll be doing intro to the project, getting some basic stuff set up and getting very basic world generation set up. Let's start by creating a new MP project. Let's name this Minecraft in quotes. So we have a few things we need to get done first. First, let's get the Proton lib. So we want to get this in here, Proton Noise Library. I made this to speed up the process of getting this all working. So we can easily have Proton Noise with time to copy and paste it from somewhere. What this is, is this gives us this. I got this from off the internet. And let's get started. Let's create a new script and call this world generator. So let's go back to our main area. We can add a few custom properties. We're going to add this. And we also want to add a new script and name this lots. So have the data of all our blocks that we need. Now that we have that, let's come back to here and start working on it. So we're gonna have local rolling noise equals require. Basically what this does is allow us to have all the functions that are returned from here. So as you can see this returns the proline and our block script will return the table of the blocks. So basically gain access to all of that from what it returns. We can do a script. Yeah, that's the property. Proton noise. That was proton. Proton lib, sorry, my bad. Next we can have local block. He will Equals to fire block. Cool. So now let's have local load generator. So this way we can have a return value from here. So we will be able to return the load generator functions that we have. Function load generator dot generate so we have a few things we want to have in here so this function we do is it will generate a chunk of something from one x coordinate to from one coordinate to another coordinate in between those two coordinates it will generate the area so we have x start x end y start and y end Then we also need a function row generator dot spawn block. Let's actually make this generate. There we go. X, Y, Z, and block. Then what we can do is local block is row dot spawn asset block. This in close vector. We got hmm. more plants by 100. As we will be storing the positions of the blocks in meters, but core requires the centimeters of position. So, as you can see, if we get two cubes, it's up to 100. So, you can see the cube is one meter. And let's say we want to create a cube next to it, we'd have to move it 100 meters in one direction. So that's why I'm moving 100, I mean 100 centimeters, sorry. Now let's get to the void generate function. Actually, I think what I want to do first is I want to have the, um, get the blocks data set up. So what do we want to have here? We want to add some custom properties. Let's start by creating a default block. Enable networking. 
create a new listing for this blog. I guess testing blog, define name. And then we add it as a custom property to the blocks. So we add an as reference for this testing, which means basic block. We will get everything more organized with good names and folders and probably if you upsert some now, we want to get a good folder type down first. So now back to the box script. Okay, where's my um there we go? So what we can do is local blocks equals empty table. And then we can do Lots of basic law equals template or script the custom copy testing law. Now, obviously, this is not a good use of a table if we're only storing template but as time goes on we'll be storing more and more in here so we also store something like um you know block health or something like that but for now we don't need to do that so we can then just do return lots now what we can do is we can do for x equals x start X in. So this basically does a once a piece of code inside of here this many times, and we would know what the value of X is. Then for Y, it goes Y start to Y in do logo height goes f dot four. So this rounds the number down of Perlin noise first noise function from here x y zero and this is the x y and z position so we could ignore this which set this to zero and then we also have the rate at being the scale value so let's set this to 0 0.1 you can change this around as you see fit later then we'll play about 10 to make it 10 times as efficient i mean 10 times higher Load locally word generator dot spawn spawn block. You can do x y height and then block table. It's basic block. This is block spawning dot template. Then we can run this and hope we don't get any errors. Alright, bash put the script in here first. Okay, um, seems like we made an issue here with generator 2. I forgot to add in the um, name that correctly, I mean incorrectly, so let's name this Google. Nope. There we go. One more thing after I do, so I can make a new script called main script. Actually, first let's just um back to here and do row generator uh, generate. Just to test it out. So zero zero to ten ten. And we mistake here. Um, I missed word vector. Sorry. In sixteen, so I'm really just going to be probably testing block and I need to this to be basic block. Um. 
also uh, this graphic is incorrectly so to be and in this bc return sorry as you can see now we have a basic hill generating obviously not great looking let's do it before floor we can set this something like 20 to 20. obviously it only generates one block so anything below it is not is like um empty holes we'll be fixing that in the next episode i mean next tutorial and as you can see we basically have this but you do want to get one more thing set up and that would be having a main script that holds a function so what we do here is add in the row generator and then we open up main script and do local road generator what's your fire Then we can just copy this over and move this and part from here. And then we don't need this, and we only need the main script in here. Oh, uh, script copy. Um, I'm gonna sweat it again. Property. There we go. And I'm trying to regenerate. Churn, regenerate. There we go. Now, it should hopefully all be working. And we can see we have something a bit different now. This is O. Yes. Is it different? Yep, it is. Okay, so this is all working. And we have a nice little basic regeneration going on for our world. In the next episode, we'll be working on optimizations. Probably basic block breaking and only spawning blocks are shown or that kind of stuff so there's to be block so we will basically fill up all these holes that are spawned but only if necessary we will also do other things like um like breaking blocks for one pretty sure either that or in the tutorial after that depending how long that one takes i'll probably be seeing one to two tutorials of this week so this whole series will go on for around like two to three months it depends how many episodes this takes my plan is hopefully within the first five to six episodes we have the train generation system fully done as well as a whole bunch of other cool stuff like baking blocks and then we want to work on crafting and um like having pickaxes that take long to break depending on box strength, eventually inventory system, you know, kinds of cool stuff. I guess inventory system before the crafting, but maybe enemies eventually, all kinds of stuff we plan on adding. And hopefully make this into a full game sooner or later. Anyways, if you're enjoying this video and if you want to get notified on you, um, tutorials on this, please consider like subscribing, giving notifications on or something if you want to get notified. Either way, have a great day.